Right, and several months later, probably six months later, perhaps he made good what he said at that time. When he said that, he was basically calling on any of the staff who felt they compromised the election or had one or two things to do with the nullified election to step aside. But uh, six months or so later in April, we saw him write a uh, memo suspending you. That's where to begin. I think I'll take you back. I mean, uh, those clips uh, <laughs> in my memoirs, which I'm writing, they have a lot of context. Um, and given my position where I was uh, and looking at the institution, there's so many things that you never talk about uh, uh, in the open, um, uh, partly because you're looking at the greater good uh, of the institution. Uh, when we went into the election, even before the August 8th election, there were complaints by the political players, different from both sides, actually. Uh, only that it was not as pronounced uh, and in the public domain like it happened after the nullification. After the nullification, what we saw is that the, narrow, the political class narrowed down on certain officials, me being the, the lead, and about seven of my colleagues, you know, being accused of having messed up the election, and for that reason, we must uh, give way. Uh, but then, of course, the other side of the political divide, Jubilee decides uh, is also going to have a list of their own. So we ended up being 17 of us <laughs> on a list being accused for uh, being not uh, uh, good enough uh, to prepare for the, for the election. So, and at that time, there was a lot of political stalemate in terms of how we proceed uh, in, in terms of preparation. You remember NASA had uh, all these, uh, I think, 13 points. Um, issues that they, they, they say they, to, they, yes. they wanted to be addressed. Jubilee had a different position, but then the commission had to make certain decisions. So at that time, uh, and you, could, you can feel the chair. I was in, in the office and watching uh, the, uh, the press uh, conference. It, only, it happened immediately after uh, Commissioner Rosalina Combe had resigned. Uh, and that morning, uh, I had made effort to ensure that uh, if there was going to be a response on the resignation of a combat, then uh, I'll be able to provide feedback. I didn't see that. Then, of course, I saw the clip. But my heart was very heavy at the time, and I thought that something needed to be done. At some point, I felt like the organization was falling apart at a very critical moment. That was on the 18th of October, if I'm, if I'm, if, 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 if I'm not... Um, if I'm right, I, th I think it was on the 18th or 19th of, of October. So I made up my mind and I said, given where we are now, and given that the chairman is so concerned that the political class is pushing us to that particular level, and they do know some of them do not want to participate in the election, something had to be done. And I offered to take leave uh, at myself. That, at that point, no political class had said that they're not going to participate in the election. No, there were rumors. No, there were there were rumors. You, you remember, rumors, you remember that the elections was to be, uh, was to be fast on the seventeenth of October. Yes, and there was a campaign that we're not going to have elections. On there. So it was already a build up mm -hmm. uh, towards that. So when that happened, I made a deliberate uh, decision uh, that, uh, given that the operations uh, for the elections uh, were more or less set, and there was a project team that had uh, been appointed uh, by the commission, uh, whatever remained was largely administrative. I will let the team run uh, for that one week period, then we have the election. Uh, because my own personal view was that uh, the chairman felt he had this heavy load on him. And I said, I'm going to be part of the people who's going to help him. But by doing so, and why I took leave at that particular time, I was also avoiding my own staff being victimized by the political class. Because assuming the 17 of us had gone, then obviously we're going to have challenges in running the election. So people had to remain. And for that reason, I took leave to also protect my offices and protect the electoral process. Okay. Yeah. A so lot of people think you only took leave because your job was done. Basically, what they're saying is you held a brief for some people at the IBC and your job was done. I mean, I've been accused by all manner of things. And I can tell you, when you're managing a political process in a fractured society like ours, you receive all manner of things to the extent that professionalism almost doesn't count uh, for anything. So when you're dedicated, you're working, people will create all these perceptions around you. When I joined the IABC in 2015, for a period of six months, consistently, 
they kept on accusing. The Jubilee side used to accuse me that um, Raila Odinga's uh, uh, person within the commission. And at some point when Isaka San was, uh, and the team were being asked to leave, there was a proposal to get the CEO also out. We had only been there for eight months. Why? Because they didn't know me and they doubted me. They thought I was a nasty person. Fast forward, the commissioners leave. We have new commissioners. Now this time around the bad guy is Chiloba. <laughs> The new commissioners are the good ones. So the Jubilee, no, the NASA people now started accusing me for being Jubilee. They've moved on. And that kind of ping pong game continued. I can tell you, without fear of contradiction, that my dedication to the commission was based on what I believed in, in terms of the rule of law, and what could also be us as an institution. I did not just go there to look. I did not go there to look for a job. Okay. I know it, it was not going to be easy. So all these accusations will be there. Okay. And by the way, the farmer you are, mm -hmm. the more uh, the accusations. Fly. The more the accusations. Fly. All right. All right. Uh, do you have a personal relationship with uh, the deputy president of the country? I don't. Friendship? I don't. I've been accused uh, this way. I've been accused of being very close to Uhuru Kenyatta, which is not true. Uh, you know, there was a rumor <laughs> at some point that, you know, uh, I got family relationship within the Uhuru family. It's not true. My picture was out there playing around with the images of other people. It's not true. Uh, they accused me of being very close to uh, DP, uh, uh, Deputy President William Ruto. The reason that uh, one Mr. Abraham Singwe uh, career was my former colleague. Yes. We, we have colleagues all over. By the time I was being recruited in IBC, none of these people knew who I was. And if you review even the newspaper cuttings those days, you could see opposition. Some of them from uh, uh, people I knew very well, I mean, I thought I knew, uh, accusing me for being, uh, pre for being prepared to rig elections. And I can tell you without fear of contradiction that I went to IBC with a single mind okay. to do what a professional election manager would should do. be able to do. do. All right, yeah. you mentioned the time you're mentioning about uh, Novus Limited, uh, Pal Media. Yes, yes. You mentioned, uh, when you mentioned Willis, yes. and I said there's nothing that stops him from acting from the other side, yeah. you also mentioned that political perceptions are important. Korir is your friend, and he is a legal advisor of the deputy president. Obviously, yeah. the political I mean, perception matters. And I can tell you, yes. we never, ever, discuss with Korir on matters of election. Never, ever. And I can count how many times we actually got in touch. And okay. we did that on a principle. Knowing that him being there and me having gone to IABC, there was always a possibility that people will accuse us for, for such okay. relation. And yet, he was my first boss. And I, should, I will always be grateful uh, uh, for him. Because immediately I finished my pupillage, the following day I got a job okay. in his organization, which I hold so dear. But when it comes to professionalism, everyone keeps his own line. Okay. And that's what has been. Let's get back to my question. Yes. The suspension. Did he make good what he wanted to begin at that time? Because I, I, we feel you were one of the targets at that time. Yeah. You accused broadly and widely. For obvious reason. Yes. Yeah, because perhaps, uh, you know, at some point I was the face of the commission uh, when it came to election preparedness. During the time uh, Isaac Hassan uh, had agreed to leave and I was there. It's me who ushered in the new commissioners as well. And we had prepared the election. So at all this, during this period, perhaps I will say I was a person who had institutional memory and pushing my staff to be able to do what is right. So given that particular profile, I became the easy uh, uh, target. target. Okay. Um, of course, when it comes to suspension, which matter is actually in court, uh, we're still fighting uh, in court, and I will not get into the details. Uh, but that said, uh, I will say that my relationship uh, with the commissioners and what led to that particular suspension is an issue that has been contested. Uh, out of that, you know that three commissioners actually resigned. Now yes. we only have three commissioners. Uh, it's not a situation that I would have loved to, to see. When I went to leave in December uh, uh, 2017, uh, in, in October 2017, I came back 
uh, believing that now the elections are over, we're able to put uh, the house in, in order. We are able to carry out the audit for the finances that we had uh, spent in the election. We carried, carried out post-election uh, evaluation as per our elections roadmap, uh, but that did not happen. Uh, okay. So I think we spent a lot of time now being like, you know, what was the role of the CEO, uh, oh. so forth and so forth. Okay, yeah. let's listen to the reasons Chebukati gave for suspending it. Commission had received an um, internal memo, uh, a pre preliminary memo, uh, internal report, sorry, from the uh, our internal auditors, uh, which greatly uh, mentioned the CEO in terms of uh, the activities which were being audited and implicates him, implicates him in most of the activities. It's curious, um, your suspension and uh, the leaking of two memos. Yes. I'd like to begin with the first memo. The 12 point memo. Yes, yes, the 12, yes. yes. So it, did you adequately address them personally with uh, the chairman? I did not address personally with the chairman. I addressed them with the commission. With the commission, the with whole the commission. Minus I'll, the I'll, I'll also tell you the, yes. the context. You know, sometimes it's good to, to, to provide uh, context. Uh, what happened to this memo is that it was written to me. Uh, I think it was on the 4th of September, if I'm not wrong. And the issues therein were, were heavy issues. And actually, they got eight, me by eight surprise. 8th of September. 8th of September. Yes. OK. Yeah. There were very serious issues of concern, uh, which also shocked me. And I asked the chair that given the nature of these questions, you know I cannot respond to them alone. We must be able to work with the secretary team to be able to provide clarification in areas that uh, uh, I, I, uh, you've requested. So. We had that engagement. Uh, two days later, I think I received another memo demanding that I be able to uh, respond uh, by a certain time. So, but you know, these are serious issues. Which was indeed. Yeah. So I asked for more time. Uh, then we had a meeting in the morning, uh, trying to see how to work together as a team. And as we were seated there, I saw breaking news the grand memo to CEO Chiloba. Of course I knew. I knew the seriousness of the issue. But the fact that it was with the media. Who leaked it? I don't know. Who do you think leaked it? I don't want to, to, to comment on it because I want to have facts. But I can tell you, mm -hmm. that was not professional. Whoever did, it was not professional. Uh, I think it did not help the institution. And I think that was the beginning of or disturb. Uh, uh, instability within uh, the, the institution. Okay. But in terms of response, uh, thereafter we had a meeting, uh, the whole commission. Um, some commissioners actually said, uh, I would say all commissioners said that they had not seen that memo. Uh, so uh, it was chairman in his own volition who had prepared the memo. So Is the, that the procedure for uh, memo? I will not comment on that, no, but, why, why uh, but let, let me, let me that? so that I don't okay. lose track okay. of okay. My, my, my thoughts. Um, so they said, given the issues that are being raised, being very critical, uh, what the secretariat needs to do is to provide proper responses. Then we're going to have a meeting and review those responses. And we had two meetings to review the responses prepared by the secretariat. The only difference is that our responses never leaked. Were never given the prominence. And we, we personally said to distinguish the manner in which information is managed, I will not be able to to leak that information. Is there a, was there a request to leak the information? No, no one asked me to, to leak information. Okay. And I'll tell you something else. That immediately after that, uh, after the responses, there was another response to, to my memo, seeking for further clarification. Uh, what happened? That memo was also leaked. The 19th one? 19th I cannot remember the date. Yes. It was again leaked. So to me, if you ask me, whoever was behind that did not have the good uh, uh, was not doing it uh, in good faith um, and to create a situation that you know this if there was anything that went wrong in the election then is the CEO and the secretariat or maybe a section of the commissioner that is what it seemed to create it created more confusion and I don't think it helped the country today there's a lot of reference to that and yet there's no proper uh, understanding on actually what happened okay yeah a divided commission do you agree that your commission at some point you said from the leaking of the first memo, that's where the trouble in paradise began. Yeah, yeah. Do you believe uh, you were divided then or before? 
because right from there we saw the division it was very apparent i think the, 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 the divisions were more apparent uh, when it came to, uh, after the nullification of the presidential uh, election. Okay. Uh, prior, I will consider whatever we had as a normal disputes that happen. You know, you get into boardroom discussions, which is sometimes heated, but we make a decision, we carry on as a team. But after the nullification of the presidential election, then you could see a little bit of push and pull, different uh, positioning um, uh, happening. Yes. Okay. So, yeah. So there was division. Before we proceed, let's listen to Musale Mudavad. And, 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 the, and the division was largely on uh, uh, how do we proceed, for example, okay. to the next election. Election. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Let's listen to this. The institution that is called the IABC uh, is in shambles. It's riddled with corruption. Yeah. Uh, they are taking each other to court. And one year has lapsed since the last election and we are not seeing a serious effort to resolve the issues surrounding the IABC. That's the political head. Do you agree with him as uh, IABC currently is? Partly, uh, I agree with him, but on other things I disagree with him totally. Um, what I agree with him is that uh, uh, the commission as it is has got challenges uh, in terms of the governance uh, structure. We don't have four commissioners, the seven that are required. Uh, now that also poses challenges when it comes to policy decision making. And uh, that has to be addressed. But most fundamentally, I think uh, what we need to be facing is what, how can we make the operations and decision making processes within the IBC efficient and effective? Okay. And that to me is revisiting the issue of the relationship, for example, between uh, the Secretariat and the Commissioners, revisiting the issue as to whether the Commissioners must be executive or be uh, uh, just policy makers, revisiting the issue as to whether uh, the Commissioners should be full-time or be part-time. And that issue has been discussed before, but we've never found a practical solution okay. to it. And this is the time to start reflecting on that as, as a country and exploring options that will help us strengthen the institution okay. uh, as it is. So, uh, yeah, partly true, we need to be debating the future uh, of IABC. And since we also st said that we needed to start early preparation for the coming elections in 2022, uh, it's important that we have a stable uh, commission that is fully functional with seamless, proper relationship between the Secretariat and uh, uh, the, the, the commissioners uh, at that level. I, I still want to ask you about the relationships, and I'm wondering yes. the kind of relationship you had with Commissioner Kombe. Um, I've always avoided talking about it. Uh, uh, I've always avoided talking about it. But let me just say this. Uh, we have the same background. She worked for she worked for the UN, and I also worked for, for the UN. Uh, we know the type of people who work uh, in that particular uh, environment. And when she came to the commission, I think we found her to be one of the most experienced uh, commissioners when it came to actual uh, election uh, management, uh, given her, you know, her, her traveling and you know, the, the terms of reference. And we... I'll consider it, we related very well from a very professional point of view, that I must say. Uh, I think she was very analytical, uh, very strategic uh, in thinking. She was also very um, articulate, and that's why she was uh, on media most of the time. And I'll say that she would consult me quite a bit when it came to, uh, to the issues around, um, the issues around, uh, the critical issues around the media and stuff like that. Um, but what became apparent after her resignation is that um, I think there was this quiet or passive uh, aggressive relationship whereby she had her own views about uh, the secretariat. And uh, I was the one kind of protecting the secretariat most of the time, uh, which is really my job. Um, and seeing some of the memos that uh, have come into the public domain, I can tell you that some of them and most of them were never copied to me. You never saw so them? I never saw but them. But you're the chief executive I'm officer. the chief executive. I never saw those memos that she used to write to her colleagues and raising 
issues that related to the election. And not on a single occasion was that memo copied to me. You can check. Even what has been published out there, you can check. I was never copied to any of, the, any of her memos. Okay. Um, but one day I landed on one. Uh, we were having a training at, uh, at, uh, at uh, I think, Safari Park. And I landed on one memo, I looked at it, and I told the person who, who, who was having the memo, I told him, no, this one is a con it's prepared for purposes, one, leaking, two, resignation, justification for resignation. Okay. A week later, it she happened. resigned. So I thought, I believed that we were professional colleagues, uh, but again, what happened, happened. Okay. I think there was too much mistrust. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and finally on this, the resignations, right? They were also split right across right, when right. the vice chair and uh, the other two commissioners resigned. It was the same, same time you were suspended. So it was seen as though they were resigning a protest to how you treated. Maybe it's true. Uh, and I think they have the right to do that. Uh, but look, what happened is that we have six commissioners. I mean, five plus the chair. And there was this issue of uh, responding to audit queries. And Chair had written to me a memo sometimes in uh, January or February, I think. It was February uh, for me to be able to respond uh, on some of the procurement issues, which were highly, I would say, administrative issues. Uh, why is this document missing here? Why, is this, uh, why was this not done for this particular contract? Why was the standard form of the contract not used? Things like those. And we went to this meeting, and the initial meeting, we, we, issues were raised. And when issues were raised, I remember very well, commissioners were divided in the middle. One said, we are, uh, three of them said we are satisfied by the responses by the CEO. Two, of the two, one sought further clarification on one specific issue. Then on the other, one said, I'm not satis satisfied on one, this particular issue, okay. and I recommend that we take this thing to the internal audit. So it was taken to the internal audit. The internal audit presented the report to the commission through the chair, but had never given, a, given me the benefit to be able to look at those issues as a CEO, because eventually they have responded to by me with the support of the secretariat. Okay. So I never, those, I never saw those issues. So on the 6th of April, we show up at the boardroom, and that matter comes last for discussion. And they asked me to leave the office, uh, to, to leave the boardroom, uh, the note taker to leave the, the boardroom. So there were six of them. And the six of them uh, sit and I don't know was how the discussion went. Was that procedural? I mean, the law says for every commission there shall be a secretary. And the secretary is the CEO. Yes. So in this case, my argument is that there was no secretary. There was no note taker. So we'll never know actually what happened. The only thing I saw is that when I got home at night, I received a memo which said, you know, you've been requested to go on compass relief mm -hmm. following a decision of the commission. But that's when I knew that the decision was not unanimous and uh, there were actually divisions. At this particular time, there were only five commissioners. So three commissioners uh, voted to send me home. Uh, and then two commissioners uh, opposed it. One commissioner was out of the country. So I think that is what led to the, to the, uh, uh, the acrimony and eventually those uh, fallout. Okay. Uh, uh, okay, finally on that, the fact that three commissioners could come out clearly and mm. fault the chairperson mm. and say he's ineffective, uh, they use so many other terms, um, they use so many terms, let me mm. not read them, but if they could come out and speak to the character of the chairman. Could you do the same? Could you speak to the character of the chair? Well, in terms of management? You see, I have my, I have my place uh, as a CEO of the IBC, and uh, there are certain things I cannot talk about. Okay. The commission has had challenges, you know, since uh, uh, the new commission, but we were able to resolve those challenges to ensure at least we had the elections okay. uh, happening. So given where I am now, I will not uh, talk about uh, I'll talk about that. He's chair because he's, he's qualified to be chair. Okay. Be, before you resign, this is one thing that they said. Instead of instead under Chebukati's leadership, the commission boardroom has become a venue for peddling misinformation, grounds for brewing mistrust, and space for scrambling and chasing individual glory and credit. 
Would you agree? You sat in those boardrooms? No comment. On that. No comment on that. Yeah. You didn't want to comment on that. No. All right. Um, I think it's time. We, we, we need to end. We need to end. But uh, before we end, um, I'd like to ask you, uh, what's the kind of relationship that you have with the Musando family right now? Um, as a, at individual level? Yes, individual level. Do you see the wife? Do you speak to the wife if she speaks to you? Yeah, we, before the August, before the <laughs> April, issues of yeah, suspension, the suspension came up. Yes. Uh, I had actually prepared to meet the family. I worked with my HR team and we were going to visit uh, with the family, uh, talk about issues. I spoke to her on phone and uh, prepared for, for, for that. But the meeting never happened, okay. given what transpired uh, after that. Okay. But once in a while, uh, there's an exchange of uh, messages okay. uh, of encouragement. Uh, it's now been one year since, since uh, uh, the demise of the, of the mother of the husband. Uh, I think what she needs is more uh, support, more encouragement. And the commission, you know, given the HR uh, policies, has a way in which uh, such issues, um, some of the concerns that she had raised at the time, uh, we're, going, we're going to be addressed. Okay. So I suppose that maybe this progress has been four months. So and I you didn't know be because you are out. Know. Almost four months now, right? Yeah, almost, 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 April, almost uh, four months. Four months. Yeah. So we'll know right, the reason why I'm asking is I, I want your personal interpretation of this cartoon. All right, you can see it right there on the screen. Um, that's a picture uh, depicting you and, of course, the chairperson and a uh, uh, grave of Chris Musando and sort of you waving them to move on. Yeah, I saw that cartoon. Yes. Uh, and I thought it was a bit uh, uh, too much uh, in terms of depicting the situation. Um, but I, I mean, uh, around the family. Um, I want to believe that they were using that for symbolism purposes and being a public servant uh, in my position uh, and also the position of the chair there, uh, you come under a lot of criticism. So I, I suppose this was a critique uh, calling uh, us to action in terms of addressing the issues surrounding the death of Chris Musando. First is the family, then the other is about uh, uh, maybe having complete investigations and to ensure that justice is uh, actually uh, uh, done. So, yeah, uh, I looked at it and most of these things, sometimes they bother me, mm -hmm. but uh, I also realize that uh, uh, I'm in public office okay. and I'll always be defined in different ways. Okay. Uh, but I can also assure uh, the family that okay. uh, the IBC policies, uh, HR uh, policies, uh, adequate to help uh, the family address some of the concerns that they had raised. Uh, but most importantly, I think uh, the government, uh, the, especially the DCI uh, uh, department, uh, needs to perhaps first track the investigations uh, right. into the matter so of Chris a, yeah. so that we bring this matter to our closure. All right. It's really our desire. And, and yeah. you have family. I just like to know the understanding of your family, your wife your kids probably, your relatives, because these accusations have been flying around, you yeah. know? I mean, a lot of uh, accusations come on, uh, on my way. Uh, this leave has enabled me also to uh, interact a little bit more with the family, friends, uh, to also try to explain uh, what actually transpired, because there's a lot of propaganda out there. Uh, one of the things you will forever be grateful is having a family that trusts you, that believes in you, that, they, that knows you because uh, during difficult times they will always be there to stand uh, to stand for you okay. uh, so i know my kids are very young but my wife my wife has been very supportive okay. my parents uh, who for a long time i had not seen okay. until last year uh, i went to them and uh, the fact that I, I kept on interacting with them brought a lot of healing uh, to them okay. and this now we're also extending to our friends i mean a lot of people who come visiting or i go visiting uh, places uh, schools to explain a lot of these things uh, and i think with the time people will come to an understanding of okay. what happened
All right. Um, I'm, I'm going to ask you finally for yes. what you're doing currently that you're on suspension and if you do something different. But first, let's take some of your feedback. And I, I begin with the text messages on uh, 20868. And the first one here from Mwangi Timau says, one year is gone, yet IBC has not resolved past problems. How can we make the institution great for the future with no interference from political merchants? I think you've answered that yeah. on what to do with the commission. And uh, Julian Rower says, Ezra Chiloba is brilliant. He has has been condemned and hard. I absolutely agree with his take on these issues. And uh, Chiloba is just blowing hot air. What he has done is just tap dance around the issues. His long winded is nothing but a smoke screen. Uh, it's uh, from Adrian from Mombasa. And uh, the, the last one is uh, Chiloba was, was it not possible to screen a provisional presidential resource as they troop in from the constituencies instead of building results showing a consistent margin of 12 different sent by, sent by someone from Moyale. In fact, just in 30 seconds, uh, the fact that there was that consistency in uh, the difference between uh, Raila Odinga and President Kenyatta. Which, which, uh, which election? Uh, that's the 8th, August 8th. That consistency. The 8th August. Mm. And maybe if we're given an adequate time, we'll have a symposium or conference yes. on technology and elections and what happened. Mm. I'll explain to you a little bit. Just briefly. That yeah. the, 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 the elections mm. were coming from, po uh, the results were coming from polling stations. And when they come from polling stations, this polling station has a maximum of 700. But on average, I think uh, they're about 250 uh, 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 voters in that particular polling station. Yes. So. Usually, and this has been observed the world over in our own uh, elections previously, once you send results from a significant sample at random, because okay. you have no control over it, at a certain point, that number stabilizes in terms of percentages. Okay. It, it stabilizes. Why? Because it's, it's randomly sent in results and is scientifically proven. So you wouldn't say that once, and I think when it got 1.5 million votes or something like that, you, we started seeing the curve going towards stability. And that is expected. In fact, that's the normal okay. graph that you, you should okay. be able to, to I, I explain. I think this is technical. So that's we'll technical. Yeah, yeah, we'll not understand yeah, it. Yeah. All right, let's look at the tweets just briefly. 